Now that we've seen the stages of a typical suctioning procedure, let's look at some in more detail. First, we'll look at determining the required suctioning depth. Depth of catheter insertion can be calculated by using the number at the top end of the ET tube at its connection with the 15mm connector. In this case, the ET tube is 26 cm long. Now add 6 cm to this figure and you'll get a measured depth of 32 cm. Advance the catheter until 32 is seen in the window directly across from the irrigation port connector. An alternative method to calculate the depth of suction is as follows. Match the visible marker numbers of the ET tube with depth markers on the suction catheter. When the numbers are equal, the tip of the suction catheter is at the end of the ET tube. Then add one or two centimetres. This is the safest method. Bear in mind that controlled depth suction procedures for neonate, 24-hour track care and 72-hour track care are all slightly different. Once the suctioning has been completed, you should carry out a normal suction pass to clear loosened secretions. The practice of saline installation is controversial since it may or may not facilitate the removal of secretions. There's no evidence that saline installation does anything to sputum. It has been reported to cause arterial desaturation and that it may wash bacteria into otherwise healthy airways. It might be helpful for patients with thick secretions but should be used judiciously and hospital protocol should always be followed. Make sure that a collection jar and negative suction are available and if indicated by hospital protocol, oral care products are at hand. Pass the catheter into the ET tube to the measured depth and connect a saline vial to the cleaning port before performing the suctioning. It is important to time installation of the saline with inspiration to aid the flow of the saline down the ET tube. Continue flushing until the catheter is clean. This is confirmed when you see clear fluid running in the catheter. The TrackCare 72 features unique twin PEEP seals, shown here, and an airflow control valve that closes off the cleaning chamber. These help to promote a more turbulent and effective cleaning of the catheter and tip. This results in an 89% reduction of residual colony forming units on the catheter after three days in situ, when compared to our standard 24-hour catheter after just one day. When shortening the ET tube with track care in situ, the catheter must be withdrawn with the black ring visible inside the sleeve to avoid cutting the suction catheter. Some hospital protocols call for the ET tube to be cut at the lips or the teeth of the patient. Closed suction systems are packed sterile. After the closed system is in place, it becomes part of the ventilator circuit and should not be opened except as indicated on the directions for use. This includes aerosol delivery, continuous flow therapy and length of use. Always follow the directions for use to perform these procedures. The catheter must be fully withdrawn in order to ensure that it's not extended into the airway even slightly. If the catheter is left within the lumen of the airway, increased airway pressure may result. Additionally, the catheter may impede any aerosol medication delivery by acting as a baffle, causing aerosol particles to collect on the catheter rather than travelling down the ET tube. Practitioners are encouraged to proceed cautiously when using closed suction and generally there's no need to rush the procedure. The actual suction time should be no longer than 15 seconds, but because the patient is still receiving ventilation, catheter insertion and withdrawal does not need to be rushed. <laughs>